and many people in this life, and I'm just challenging you, is don't be afraid to watch your film. And, I'm, and it may not be football, right? But I'm just talking about in life, a lot of times it's hard to watch those things that would challenge you because we just don't want to deal with it. But it's important and it's imperative that you watch your film because that's what's going to help you get to your next level, not to somebody else's, but to your next level. And I want to show you something here in Scripture. When we look at J. Iris, and this is in Mark chapter five. Right. So if you don't have your Bible, uh, you, know, I mean, you, you know, you can look at it on your phone, but go back. I want you to look at this. Right. In Mark chapter five, this is when Jesus, Jesus just got done doing a miracle. And now Jesus crossed over to the other side. And the, and the Bible says that when Jesus had crossed over by boat to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered around him while he was by the lake. Right. And then it says, then one of the synagogue leaders named Jairus came. And when he saw Jesus, he fell to his feet. He pleaded earnestly with him. My little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. So Jesus went. Right. So, if you know, and you read in another account where the centurion one of his men was dying, and he said, yo, Jesus, could you heal my, my servant? Jesus said, yes, where is he? And the servant was like, no, you don't even have to go. Just send your word. He said, I don't even have to go. But here, J. Iris is like, listen, I need you to come to my house to heal my daughter. And I know many of you, you don't have kids, but it's something about having a child. Now your child is dying. J. Iris is like, listen, Jesus, I know you're busy, but I need you to take some time out of your day to come and heal my daughter. And so Jesus said, yes. Now watch this. It said a large crowd followed and pressed around him. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She has suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and has spent all she had. Yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. Just think about it. This woman had an issue for 12 years and no matter what she did, she didn't get better. Now, I know people who's been praying for years. I know I was when my mom was dying. I was in the hospital. I'm praying and I'm like, Ma, you got to get up. Because I know I'm saying like scripture, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. This has to work out for me. You moms, you can't leave. So I'm praying and I'm doing all types of stuff. But what happened? She got worse and she got worse and she got worse. But I challenge it's like, yo, when, when, when we begin to put our faith in the creator. It's cool to say that he is all things that he's wonderful, but what happens when things don't work out? When you grinding and you praying and you doing all the things that you know to do and you like, yo, I want to start, I want to do this, I want to go to the next level, and it doesn't happen. It's like in the no. Like what, what happens when, when he says no or not yet? Is he still good? Is he still faithful? That's the question. Everything is cool with him when things go right. But but what happens when the answer is no and it's not working out for your good? That that's the thing. So J. Iris is like, listen, I, I need you to heal my daughter. She's dying, Jesus. And Jesus is like, yo, I'm coming. And so the, the Bible talks about how this large crowd begin to press around him. And a woman was there that, that had this issue, right? And it said that she got worse. But when she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought, if I can just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Now, listen, I'm J. Iris, and I'm like, listen, Jesus, I need you to press through this crowd. Because now this woman said, the Bible says immediately her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. At once, Jesus realized that the power had gone out of him and he turned around 
in the crowd and asked, who touched my clothes? Now, you see this picture. Jairus is like, listen, my daughter is at home dying. And here you are sitting here talking to these people, talking about who touched me. You have to think about it. The Bible was clear when it said that all of these people was around him. It's just like me telling all of us to get around Dean and, and start touching him. And he asked the question like, yo, who's touching me? It's a silly question. Like, it's a lot of us around you. It's a lot of us. But it was something different about that woman because he was like, no, no, no. Just, just I understand people touching me, but somebody touched me. Somebody tapped into something. Somebody touched me different. There's a lot of people in the crowd, but something was unique about somebody that was there. So my question to you, are you going to be different? Are you going to be the one to say, Jesus, I just want to touch your hem. It, it's not about me. It's about my assignment. I just need to be healed. I've been going through this for a long time, but I need to get healed because I have an assignment. There was a time in my life, man, I know I was coming or going. All I can think about was just securing the bag. That's all I cared about. But my marriage was having issues. I was being, you know, challenged in every area of my life. But I realized that, you know what, Sean, you will you'll win all of that stuff out there, but you will lose this very thing that's here. And I learned that it's not about chasing a bag. I'm, I'm giving you a jewel here that you take this with you on the field. You take this in the classroom. You take this when you raise your children. I'm telling you, this is a jewel. Don't ever chase the bag. Chase your assignment. 